As you know by now, Lightroom is an all-in-one solution to your digital imaging needs. The slideshow feature in Lightroom is yet another example of this. Not only can you easily create a slideshow complete with text and sound and full motion video, you can also display the slideshow from within the Lightroom environment or export it as a QuickTime movie. In this video, I'll show you the basics of creating and displaying a slideshow in Lightroom. Let's start here in the slideshow module. It's organized very much like the other modules in Lightroom. The left panel, there are options for ready-made templates and easy access to your collections. The right panel is where you'll apply custom settings to your slideshow, as well as find various playback options. The film strip here at the bottom reflects which images are available for your slideshow. You can use all the images in the film strip or just select a few. The toolbar here offers different choices, which I'll get into shortly. So how do you create a slideshow? I suggest you start over here in the library module. I'm going to create a collection of images that I want to use for my slideshow. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. I have gone through a lot of these images and labeled them with the purple color. And these are the images that I want in my slideshow. Now I'm going to go under Edit, and I'm going to select by color label, purple in this case. And now all the images that I want to have in my slideshow are selected. Then I'm going to come up here under Collections, select the plus sign, Create a Collection. I'm going to give the collection a name, and I want to include the selected photographs. And then I'll select Create. And you can see down here now we have a collection ready to be taken into the slideshow module. Well, almost ready. A couple things I want to suggest before you go into the slideshow module. You can do your organizing and sorting here in the library module. Let me show you what I mean. I can move images into different positions because what's going to happen when I go to the slideshow, it's going to play them sequentially. So this will be the first slide, second slide, and so on. Now I may want to change the order, and it's very easy to do that here in the grid view in the library module. Now I'll be able to do that in the film strip later uh, if I want in the slideshow module. It's just a little bit easier to do it down here. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time organizing this, but you get the idea how you can move things around and, and make sure that they're in the right order. Another thing I want you to think about is just to take a quick look at all the, the exposure values and make sure that the images are in the same ballpark when it comes to exposure. Because if you have an image that's a little bit dark or a little bit light, it'll really be jarring if it's juxtapositioned against other images that are, uh, let's say, uh, perfectly exposed. So that's one thing to look for here. You can see pretty much at a glance how the images look together in the thumbnail version. So there's one thing that's new in Lightroom 5 for the slideshow module, and that's the ability now to add video. So you can incorporate video into your slideshow. I'm just going to show this one little short clip that captures a sense of uh, the wind that is ever present in Mendocino. And I did my editing beforehand, because you can do some basic video editing in the library module. I've cut this down so it's just an eight second clip and it's all ready to go now into the slideshow module. All right, so once you've organized your images and you have them all uh, in the order you want them, now we're going to go over to the slideshow module. And to do that, I'm just going to click slideshow up here in the module picker. And we are now in the slideshow module where we started from. Let me go ahead and select the first image. OK, so how do you create a slideshow? Here's the template browser over here. This is really where I start. Even though I ultimately will create my own template, I oftentimes just start with one of the templates that is provided in Lightroom. Let me show you a couple of them. Caption and rating, for example. The rating for that particular image will appear up in the left. And then down here, uh, we, can, we can actually type in a caption if we want. That's one option. We have crop to fill uh, literally fills up the screen. Uh, it's, 
not going to necessarily do justice to, say, vertical pictures. So the XF metadata template, it's basically displaying uh, anything that's in the creator field up here in the upper left and other information that is generated by the camera down below. And then widescreen is just that. It will optimize the, uh, uh, the viewing area and your image, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do, because I want to customize this, and uh, by customizing it, I'll be able to show you how to work all these different options over here in the right panel. So I'm going to start over here with a caption and rating. This is just the starting points for me. I just, I think it's, you know, it's in the ballpark. So once I start uh, with a template, I can come over here to the right side, and let's go through and see what all these options are, and I'll show you how I would customize this and then make my own template. So under options, uh, let's just walk through them. Zoom to fill frame. I'm not going to do that because then it's going to crop my images, and I, I want to show the images uncropped. I can add a, a stroke border, uh, and it's suggesting already a white stroke border with a very, very slight um, one pixel width. I'll go ahead and keep that. As far as the cat shadow goes, I like the shadow you see here on the right side. I can take that off, or I can also tweak it here with the different uh, settings. I'll keep that on. As far as layout goes, uh, this is what determines where the picture sits on the screen. And the guides, you can turn them on and off, but they, I think they're pretty useful. Uh, I can move this to the left and right, and you can see how this is now changing the, uh, the size of the image in relationship to the screen. Then down to overlays, I'm going to use an identity plate. I'm going to go ahead and select that now. But I don't want to use this identity plate. I've created another identity plate that I call Mendocino Road Trip, and I'm going to use that. You may be asking yourself, how did I create this identity plate? It's really simple. You just select that little arrow down on the lower right-hand corner and then Edit. And then you can type in uh, whatever you want here in the identity plate editor and create a new identity plate, which then will appear in this pop-up menu here. So I'd already created the Mendocino Road Trip before, and that's why it was there. OK, but it's not in the right position. So let me move my cursor over to the preview window area, place it over the, the text, and click and drag. Now I want to put this right in the middle. And you can see now that that anchors it right in the middle. OK, I can resize it by just clicking and dragging here, but I, I think it's a good size. I'll just keep it like that. And I can also override color and put different colors here using the color swatch, just clicking on this and then there. And I can put any color I want. I'll just go ahead and keep it uh, the black. Now I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit, just moving that slider to the left. And this is where you can also scale the text. I showed you another way to do it right off of the uh, preview window itself. All right, so let's move down. If I want, I can add a watermark. I'm not going to do that, um, even though I do want uh, the credit associated with the picture. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that in a second. I don't need the rating stars. I'm going to turn those off. That was part of the template, but I just, I'm going to deselect that so they go away. Uh, as far as text overlays go, this is going to control my text overlay. And you'll see in a second how I'm using a text overlay. Now I'm going to move from the right side panel down here. You see the toolbar where it says ABC, add text to a slide. I'm going to add some text now. I'm going to click on that. And over here to the right, it says custom text. And then there's a field where I can type in custom text if I want. But in fact, I'm going to use some of the data that I entered uh, to my pictures when I imported them. I'm going to use the creator field. And that's going to automatically place my name, which I've associated with the creator field, as text that will be placed on the slide. Now you can see over here, there's already a text box that was part of the template. I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit the delete key, and now it's gone. I'm just going to use this text box. So if I click and drag, just like I did up above with the identity plate, I can position that, and I can size it any way I want. Let me go ahead and place it right in the middle there. OK, now if you come over to the text uh, overlays, you can see the text that's selected will now be controlled. 
here. I can change the font, uh, the face, and I can add a drop shadow if I want or not. I think I'll leave this without a drop shadow. And you can add as many uh, text fields as you want. And there's all kinds of options. You can do a, a custom one, as I showed you. You can do a text box based on the date, the equipment, exposure, et cetera, et cetera. And if you select Edit, you can even go in and, and find other criteria to, uh, to apply. All right, so let's keep moving on down. And as far as the backdrop goes, let me show you how the color wash works. I'll just click and deselect it. Now the background color uh, is only the background color that's selected here, and I could select a different background color, or if I deselect that, it goes to black. But I like the color wash, so I'm going to keep that on. And what that does is creates a relationship between this color that's selected here and this color down here. So it's going white to gray. And if I want to make that more dramatic, I could turn this gray into black. Well, I'll go ahead and do it and show you what I mean. And you can see how the wash now is a little bit more contrasty. I actually like that. I think I'll keep that. Okay, so down to titles. This is just your intro and ending screen. If you want, you can use an identity plate. And remember, you can make custom identity plates to introduce the slideshow. And then you can have one at the very end. I think I'll leave those deselected. Now, we're finally coming to the playback part. And here, we can add audio. Uh, if we want, and it's very simple to add audio. You can select the music, you know, you navigate to wherever your music files are, and once you've done that, you can also then have the option to fit your slideshow to the length of the music. So let's say you have a, a song or a music piece that's six minutes long. If you select fit to music, it will automatically uh, paste the slides so they begin and end at the same time as the music or not. You can also control the duration manually as well down here. Okay, this audio balance, I want you to understand how this works because this is new to uh, Lightroom 5. Because we have the ability to add video now uh, within a slideshow, video oftentimes has sound or audio. So using this slider here, if we move it to the left, we put full emphasis on the sound that's associated with the video. If we move it all the way to the right, It'll only be the music in the background, so the video sound or audio will be muted. But what is probably more useful is to find some place maybe in the middle or a little bit leaning towards the video, so it'll, so it'll fade into the video out of the music and then fade out of the video audio and back into the music. You'll just have to play around with this slider to get it right. You can choose which playback screen. This is really cool. You can either have it playback uh, on your on your main computer or your main screen or on a second monitor. Now down here, manual slideshow, uh, this is where it's actually done by hand. You just click each time the slide moves and it won't move till you click. If that's deselected, you can pick a duration uh, for the slide and the fades. And again, this is going to depend on how fast you want the slides to go, how long you want a fade to be. You're going to have to play around with this, and you'll come up with something that works for you. Or you may have just selected to fit the slides to music, which is fine as well. Uh, you can have uh, Lightroom do the slides in random order if you want by selecting this. But usually, for me at least, I like to have control over the order of the slides, so I don't use the random order option. And I can have the slideshow repeat if I want as well. Okay, so let's see. We're, we've got our settings, I think, pretty good. I haven't added music. Normally I would, but I'm not going to hear. Um, I want to just take a look at the video part. I'm going to make a selection right here. I'm going to do a preview. I'm not done yet. I just want to see how things are going. So I'm going to pay particular attention to how the video is incorporated. So I'll hit the preview, and you can see now, in a second, it moved over to the video. And now it's going to move over to the next slide as soon as the video is finished playing. I just wanted a little taste of the uh, wind. That's why I put that in there. All right, so things are looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click over here. This is the stop button, stop the slideshow. I've got something now that I'm happy with. Now, this is something that I could very well use on with other slides as well. I'd probably want to change the name of it. But I'm going to create a user template. And I'll just call this um, 
basic slideshow. That's not very creative, but you know what I'm talking about. You can come up with your own creative name for your own slideshow template. And now that will exist over here under user templates and it'll always be accessible to me with all these options. Like I said, I would go back and change the, the title if I was using other slides. Okay, so just a couple other things down here at the bottom. You may notice that we can choose to use all the film strip photos, which using my method, which I just described, where you start in the library module, make your selection uh, and a, you know, a collection, and then bring it into the slideshow module. This is probably what you want to do. But you can also just uh, make your selection within the film strip and just use the selected photos or the flag photos. It's up to you. Okay, so when everything's all done and I've made my template, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to create a saved slideshow. I'll click that up here and I'll give this a name, Mendocino Road Trip. And I want it to go inside the slideshow folder and I'll select Create. And what that's doing is over here in the Collections panel, whether regardless of where you are, I could be in the library module, you'll see that this little icon here appears and it tells me it's, a, it's built as a slideshow. Oh, well, let me show you. I'll go back over to the library module. And now, under this, with this icon showing and this little arrow on the right, if I click on that, it'll take me right into the slideshow module and I'm ready to show the slideshow. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to hit play right now and see what happens. I won't play the whole thing, but you'll get an idea. Okay, so I can see a couple things that I'm going to probably want to change. At the bottom here, um, the creator field, my name, that's not showing up very well. So I'm going to have to go back and tweak the, uh, the settings on that. Easy to do, and I'll do that later. But you can see it's a, it's a beautiful full screen slideshow, and it's just a great way to show off your work. I'm, this is probably one of my favorite features in, in Lightroom is this, uh, the ability to do slideshows this easy, this quick, and to have them display so beautifully. So there you go. Now you have what you need to know to make a slideshow of your own.